guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Justine, and if you are new here, before you do anything, click the little subscribe button below and turn on post notifications so you can get notified when I post more videos like this. Okay, so today I'm gonna to be doing another kind of sit down, chit chatty video, and I'm going to be talking about antioxidants, which have gained a lot of popularity in recent years, so I just wanted to touch on some of the ones that I like to include in my diet. Okay, before I get started, I just wanna say, like I did in my last video talking about the anti-inflammatories, that I am by no means an expert or a doctor or a nutritionist or anything, so um, I have done my own research online and I'll put all the links below that I have um, looked at myself, but I just think it's cool to be able to share the knowledge that I have and spread awareness about these types of foods, so yeah. Feel free to do your own research though and I welcome you to comment or message me with any of your own pieces of information or advice that you have yourself. So firstly, I just wanna talk about what the heck antioxidants are and what they do in our body that's so good for us. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is called oxidative stress. So basically what happens inside your body every day is oxygen grabs stray electrons and basically goes crazy. This results in cellular damage and it's thought to contribute to the aging process. This is why we all get wrinkles, it contributes to why we lose our memory, and also it contributes to the destruction of our organ systems. We really want to include antioxidants in our diet because they can help slow down this process. And in particular, we want to include plant-based antioxidants because they've been found to contain 64 times more antioxidants than food sources which are animal derived. It's also been found that diets high in antioxidants help prevent against things like stroke, inflammation, the formation of blood clots, and artery stiffness. So yeah, that's basically kind of what oxidative stress is and how antioxidants help in preventing that and preventing the aging process. All right, so the first antioxidant that I wanna talk about, and it's probably one of the cheapest and most widely available antioxidants that you can get, and I, I think I mentioned it in my anti-inflammatory video as well, but um, it's red cabbage. I'm gonna read my notes because I don't wanna miss anything here. But red cabbage contains components like thiamine, riboflavin, folate, calcium, manganese, magnesium, iron, and potassium, as well as vitamin C, vitamin A, vitamin E, vitamin K, dietary fiber, and the B vitamins. And on top of that, researchers have now identified nearly 20 different flavonoids and 15 different phenols in cabbage, all of which have antioxidant activity in your body. So basically, red cabbage contains anthocyanins and indoles, which is actually where the purple color comes from. And these are where the antioxidant component comes from as well. So the indoles in red cabbage have been connected to reducing breast cancer, and the vitamin A in red cabbage has also been connected with reducing the chances of lung cancer. Also, the high levels of vitamin A in red cabbage is very beneficial for your skin. So it helps regrow skin cells and it protects from sun damage and it helps protect the elasticity of your skin. So some of the ways I like to include red cabbage in my daily diet is I basically add it to any type of salad I'm making. It doesn't matter what type, I just uh, shave some on the top of it and it just adds a really nice flavor. It's kind of Cabbage is almost a little bit spicy, so it adds a nice bite. And then other ways I like to enjoy it are in stir fries. All right, so the next food I'm gonna talk about is lemons. So lemons are an excellent source of vitamin C. It's essential for protein metabolism, production of neurotransmitters and collagen, which is a key component in connective tissue. It helps in wound healing and Eating vitamin C with a source of iron helps with the absorption of the iron. Some of my favorite ways to enjoy lemons are in my morning elixir that I have, which now includes lemons, apple cider vinegar, and then my E3 Live in a big jug of water, and I have that every morning to start out my day, and it's awesome for aiding in digestion, and it just gives you a huge boost of antioxidants in the morning. Also, I like to put lemon on any of my salads, um, any of my Buddha bowls, things like that, any excuse that I can get to put lemon in things, I usually do because I really like the taste of it. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna talk about is called amla. 
which is also known as Indian Gooseberry. This is more of a recent one that I've come across and I found it on nutritionfacts.org by Dr. Michael Greger. He did, um, he actually he has a few videos on it, but basically it's an Indian spice and it's been used for a long time in Ayurvedic, I think that's how you pronounce it, but I'm not totally sure. It's been used for a long time in the treatment of high cholesterol, inflammation, cancer prevention, and even in diabetes and Alzheimer's. Um, it's been found to have more antioxidants even than blueberries. Like even a teaspoon of it a day has super potent antioxidants, so it's really cost effective and it's an easy um, spice to just order online and add to your daily diet. Pretty much the only way that I know how to add it to my diet right now because it has been more of a recent addition is just putting a teaspoon of this in my daily smoothie. You really can't taste it and it's super good for you so that's just how I've been enjoying it but let me know if you have other ways that you like to enjoy it. Okay so next up I want to talk about goji berries and you've probably already heard about goji berries. They're uh, super fruit. Goji berries contain uh, one of the highest concentrations of an antioxidant called zeaxanthin. So this is what makes them so powerful. Out of all of the common dried fruits that you can get, goji berries have the highest antioxidant concentrations in them. So they're super good dried fruit to get your hands on and they last forever because they're dried obviously. Some of the ways I like to enjoy goji berries are just throwing them on my smoothie bowls. They add a really nice flavor and they're nice and chewy to have with the smoothie bowl. I also keep them in my car just to snack on them as is and I take them with me when I go traveling. Also, a uh, super fun fact that's kind of unrelated, but goji berries contain one of the highest concentrations of melatonin. So if you're ever at night and you're having difficulty sleeping, just snack on some goji berries before bed and it'll help with you going to sleep. Another tip is for a cheaper option, you can find goji berries at Asian markets, but they're under the name Lysium Berries. So check your local Asian food market for a cheaper option of goji berries. Otherwise, you can get them at your bulk food store or order them online. Okay, next up is berries. So berries are super high in antioxidants, but the berry with the highest antioxidant concentration is actually blackberries. So they contain even more antioxidants than blueberries. And all berries contain anthocyanins, which are the antioxidant component in them, along with many others, but the anthocyanins are what make them so reddy and purpley blue. And so you can kind of tell, like, blackberries are so dark, they're black almost, so they contain the highest concentrations of anthocyanins. So if you can get your hands on blackberries, that's great, but also all berries are a great source of antioxidants. Berries help boost the immune system, prevent against cancer, and they help protect the liver and the brain. So really great source of food to have in your diet daily. Some of my favorite ways to enjoy berries are just throwing them in smoothies. I like to put them on my oatmeal. Even in my salads, I like throwing blueberries and blackberries and raspberries on my salads. Okay, so the last thing I'm gonna talk about is cloves. And I have mentioned these before in my anti-inflammatory video, but um, they're also a really powerful antioxidant. Cloves contain eugenol, which I have talked about as being the anti-inflammatory component, but they also contain camphorol and ramatin, which are the antioxidant components. And cloves are actually 100 times more concentrated in their antioxidant content than blueberries. So cloves are a really good one just to keep around in your house. Some of the ways that I like to enjoy cloves are in uh, chai tea, apple cider, I throw them in chilies and soup. The sky's pretty much the limit with cloves. They're really awesome to add in baking as well. All right, so that's all the antioxidants that I have to talk with you about today. These are just some of the antioxidants. There's a ton of different antioxidants out there, but these are just the ones that I wanted to talk about today because they're pretty accessible super cost effective, and they're all fairly simple to include in your daily diet. So one of the things about antioxidants is it's important to consistently eat them throughout the day and eat them daily because as soon as you stop eating them, the effects of oxidative stress come back. So it's important to keep a constant level of antioxidants in your blood to reduce the effects of oxidative stress. Like I said at the beginning of the video, if you have any of your own pieces of information or articles or books or anything like that that you would like to let me know about, please feel free to comment below or shoot me a message on here or on my Instagram. My handle is linked below. That's everything that I have to say. I hope you enjoyed this video and found some useful information in it. Please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you like this video. I post twice a week so you don't want to miss out on my videos. See you in my next video you guys. Bye!